Welcome back. All right, I want to talk about jerseys. I want to talk about the past, the present, the future, and all this fun stuff, and just estimates on prices here too, and talk about how how yes, the prices are are definitely pricey, uh, and and the whys and where it might be headed. So that being said, uh, I've also got a rack back here that I brought in. I've got jerseys of various forms that I want to talk about because people have been asking for me to do a video like this for quite some time. So. Yvonne did the jersey fixing video, which led to a lot of, thank you, this is very informative. And then there were a few comments that were kind of nasty, and I'm thinking, but people asked for this video. If, if you're not interested, you can see in the title what it is. At any rate, I always find that weird. You can tell from the title of the video what it's about. People, nobody cares about this. Why'd you click on the video? I don't click on videos I don't care about. Anyways, I started collecting jerseys around 1990. And uh, I, I would go to Sham Sports at Cottonwood Mall, in Chilliwack, which isn't there anymore. Well, Cottonwood Mall is still there. Shem Sports is not, and Shem Sports no longer sells uh, jerseys. They don't have CCMs. Do not raid them for it. Uh, now I was paying fifty bucks each. I remember this because uh, I was, you know, trying to get as as many as I could and trying to save up fifty bucks here and there. Uh, with inflation, it's one hundred and two dollars and eighty five cents. Back in nineteen ninety, I wasn't making a ton of money, but I would save up. I would scrimp and save and get a Boston jersey or Vancouver or uh, Minnesota, which would become Dallas, and Calgary as well. So the the price stayed about the same, and then eventually end up with pro player starter coming in. The prices I remember, and these are Canadian prices, one hundred and nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Because it's weird, isn't it? You didn't want to have it exactly one hundred and twenty dollars. Be like one nineteen ninety nine. I feel like prices are different now. Now that we've moved towards online selling. Uh, but with inflation, that's $202.49. Not completely out of line with what they charge for jerseys now. Again, Canadian. Uh, Reebok came in in 2005. The replicas, and I'm just talking about replicas here. So just for people on, on, a, on a budget, $129.99. Which, again, with inflation is $195.29. Now, with Reebok, they were also selling the authentics i have some reebok authentics when reebok didn't have the contract anymore all those reebok jerseys went on sale that's where the channel was starting to blow up and i was like all right i'm gonna get as many of these jerseys for 20 bucks as i can and i i, I raked in a bunch for 20 bucks so when people look at my collection like oh how much did he pay for that nowhere near as much as people think now 2017 adidas comes in and it's 199 dollars. now where people got mad is Adidas selling them and saying authentic, but they were not the authentic ice on ice product, which which Reeboks were. And so that made people angry and they weren't the made in Canada variety either. So the made in Canada Adidas have stayed pretty scarce, pretty hard to find and very expensive when you find them. So Adidas, it's it's been an interesting journey with Adidas that we've had over the last seven years. And Adidas decided to pull out of the contract. It wasn't that the NHL didn't want to continue with Adidas. It was Adidas wasn't happy. And I, I get the feeling that whether it's CCM, Starter, Reebok, Adidas, and I understand Adidas owns Reebok and all that. But it feels like there's not enough profit in making NHL jerseys. And, and that, that, I, that is my suspicion because people get mad about Fanatics getting the contract. I have those same concerns. No one else bid for it. So it's either Fanatics makes them or, I don't know, I guess the NHL could make them in-house, right? Uh, so that's that's how Fanatics wins the bid. No one else was bidding with them. It was just they were, they were bidding and that was it. The one bid and it's done. So there are concerns. Now with Fanatics, what I'm going to be curious to see is there are rumors that the on-ice jerseys will be available from Fanatics. The Made in Canada on-ice, what the players wear on the ice. They're going to be pricey. They're going to be very pricey, but if those become available at retail level, that'll make some of the collectors happy. But for people who generally buy jerseys, they're not necessarily the collectors. And what's weird is, despite what I have on my wall here, to some, I'm not really truly a collector because I don't make sure they're on ice. I I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't have them framed. I, I wear them. There are some collectors who, who would not consider my collection to be worth a whole lot. And I'll go through why. Um, because for me, it's it's been more about, you know, I needed this, this jersey to fill this spot in my collection. And I would find a way to do it on a budget. I wouldn't be like, oh, it's it's got to be, you know, made here. And it has to be this variety. And it has to be, I, I didn't really care. 
So um, it, the on ice is very likely going to happen with Fanatics. And of course, they've talked about how they're still making them in the same place as the Adidas's were. So are those going to be called replicas then? Well, Fanatics deem those ones replicas. And then the Fanatics version that we have currently of jerseys is it, it, it's definitely lower quality materials. It's a little more comfortable to some fans wearing them. Uh, but you can tell that the materials used to make the Adidas jerseys are a little higher quality than those used to make the Fanatics, right? And and that's that's just been the idea. But will there be three options? So will it be on ice replica? And then they'll have the one in between. So will that be called an authentic? And then we'll have an on ice? That seems kind of weird, doesn't it? So we'll see what Fanatics does and how they term it. Now, I'd like to see some other things that... I've got here that I'll talk about done by Fanatics. And I've got some some fun ideas that I'd like to see brought back to when jersey collecting was was kinda kinda fun. It was it was really kind of fun. Uh, it feels like with Adidas some of that fun kinda kinda dropped a little bit. Um, now the scarcity of classic jerseys. Again, at the time this channel was was growing in 2016 and 2017, those classic jerseys were on sale. Generally speaking, if it's CCM uh, starter, anything like that online, people just wanted to get rid of them. So I was going through eBay and picking up a lot of these for $20, $30, maybe $40. And again, when CCM lost the contract, uh, a lot of those classic jerseys went on sale because online sellers were just trying to get rid of the product. They had inventory they wanted to get rid of. What's interesting to me is that we will look at a jersey and go, oh, I don't want that. And then once the scarcity kicks in, then everybody wants it. I don't think there's a better example than the Islanders Fisherman. The Islanders Fisherman jersey was everywhere when it came out. I, I never knew anybody that bought one. I remember seeing it in the mall and going, I'm not buying that. No way, that's a ridiculous jersey. And then decades go by and all of a sudden it's a really in-demand jersey. If you have a good Fisherman jersey, you could get $400 for it on eBay. And, and back in, in 1999, you couldn't have got 50 bucks for it. People were like, that's the ugly one. Why would I want that? And Islander fans were like, are you kidding me? We don't wear that. We're, we're back to the other other look. We're not, that that look is just gone. We had to get rid of that. So it is interesting to see how things change. I remember getting the, uh, the first Kachina jersey of the Arizona Coyotes that I had. And I used to wear it, and people would be like, that's really ugly. Why are you wearing that? Oh, that's that's what replaced the Jets. Man, that is one ugly jersey. And then years later, um, getting compliments on it. Like, man, that's a nice look. That's a really nice jersey. So time will change our opinions on jerseys, except the jersey jersey in New Jersey. That jersey's just, there's too much jersey there. But it, it is, because of how scarce these classic jerseys are getting, it really does open up the door for the kit jerseys and the fakes. And I do consider those to be two different things, although if you don't consider them to be two different things, I understand. And while I may not 100% agree, I can nod my head and say, all right. Now, the the place to get your jersey done, so if, you're, if you've got a blank and you want to get it done authentically, Hockey Authentic does it authentically. Hockey Authentic is pricey, but from everything that I've heard, they do really, really good work. I have wanted to get a jersey done through them, but again, the price just scares me off because I'm like, I uh, I want that, but that's three hundred dollars, and I can get it over at the other site for a lot less. And I mean, and and that's the thing, you know, you're getting the authentic font, you're getting the authentic lettering, numbering, everything, right? Uh, now with Cool Hockey, you may not get that, and I'm saying that straight out. And I know there's people who don't like dealing with Cool Hockey. I haven't had problems with Cool Hockey. Um, my New York Rangers jersey that I showed when I was doing the, the top 100 jerseys in the summer, uh, there was a stain on it that uh, people pointed out in the comments and that I noticed after I did that video, or while I was doing the video, I really noticed it. If you pay attention, you'll see me kind of do that. But um, my wife could not clean that one. That one, whatever, it's an oil-based stain, it wouldn't come out. So I knew I had to replace the White Rangers, and I was like, I need to replace the White Rangers. So I, I went through Cool Hockey, and that's where I've got the Gretzky, uh, the, the new I just got Gretzky uh, Rangers in white, because, again, I do have some concern when Fanatics kicks in. I don't know what the price point's going to be. I don't know how, I don't know how well they're going to work with the online sellers, because Adidas themselves, 
haven't necessarily been all that kind. There's the mix-up with the stadium jerseys not getting to Canadian online stores that have been told that they had them. They had them on their orders, and they just didn't get them. And uh, there's some product that they were supposed to get in October that they don't get until months later, and and it's just a mess. Or jerseys they get told they're not going to get that then they show up. So it, it has been a mess this last year with Adidas. I think they just want to be done with it. But you can go through Adidas's app and order jerseys that way as well. And I know I've got some really good deals going through them when they have the flash sales. I've had some really good deals going through them too because you build up your points, you, you build up your levels. And, and honestly, I've, I've made a killing on some of the jerseys I've got through them. So I'm just throwing that out there. And then team stores. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about team stores again. So if you search, say New York Rangers team store, the first result you get will likely be the NHL.com website and all the Rangers gear. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to scroll down and find like the official store. Uh, not every store ships, I don't think, but they all should. They all should. So double check on that. But I have got some really good deals going through team stores. I have got deals going through the Coyotes team store. Um, I've had to go through the Islanders team store. Buffalo. Buffalo does really nice numbering and lettering through their team store. Um, I have a Lena Solmark jersey. Obviously, I can't wear that a lot because Buffalo with Olmark, and he's not there anymore. But, um, yeah, really, really nice work there. Obviously, I order a lot from the Vancouver store. This 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 jacket I got through the Jets team store, as well as my, my Moose uh, t-shirt that I just got a couple weeks ago. The hat I got from Lids, um, which is one of the sadder stories that's taken place over the years. Lids, of course, being bought up by Fanatics. And now it's just part of Fanatics, so there isn't really a difference when you go through the websites. Uh, but the team stores are really a good place to get, like some of the magnets that I have, some of the really fun magnets. I've gone through uh, NHL team stores and found those. Uh, the ones that I used in the preview videos, I'm really interested in expanding my collection of those magnets, and I may have to go through team stores to do it. That's what I'm really curious and really interested in. Because generally, they're between like 6 and $10 each if you know where to look and all that. So, yeah, team stores can be really key for just fun stuff and finding something for, for kind of cheap. Um, it's not like I paid full price on the jacket. I got it for 50% off. Um, still cheap. It's one thing about being broke for my entire life. Still cheap. Definitely still cheap. I still look and go, uh, no. Uh, but then there's, there's the NHL slash lids slash fanatic site. It's all the same. The listings are exactly the same. And it was sad when this happened, when Fanatics bought it up. And then instead of having three different sites where you might be able to find different items, uh, Lids, Lids items were just gone. Uh, there were items that I wanted on their website. And then I went back to check it the next day because I was like, okay, Fanatics, and that was, they were gone. They were just gone. There was no way to even, you couldn't even search, gone. Um, so I, I still don't know what happened to all that product because it just, it just disappeared. Uh, probably ended up in some kind of warehouse somewhere and then ended up in a, a Ross or something like that, right? But I, I, I use those sites. I generally just go to the NHL shop. They usually have the best sale on there. And again, you're usually able to find stuff on clearance. Um, I, I go through Home and Office, that section of the website, a lot. Just Home and Office, search for magnets, I search for decals or decals. And yeah. Uh, basically, that's what I do. And then if you're Canadian, there's the Pro Hockey Life website, uh, which is good for almost anything hockey related because it's right in the name. And then Sport Check. Sport Check has a lot of stuff on their website too. Uh, sometimes the price can be a little bit higher. But like reverse retros you're looking for, uh, both Pro Hockey Life and Sport Check still have a pretty decent selection of the reverse retros. Uh, if you're in the U.S., I know Dick's Sporting Goods can be good. I've talked about the Dick's Sporting Goods deal that I got all those years ago. I will not make you suffer for through that story again. But Dick's Sporting Goods can be a, a good spot to get uh, various uh, NHL jerseys and items. And again, they have big blowout sales that are ridiculous. There's no way they're making their money back. Uh, they're, they're definitely selling below cost, and when they're doing that, you kind of have to pull the trigger. Even if you're not planning on wearing it, just think about it. You get a jersey from Dick's for $10, you can turn around and sell it on eBay for 100 There you go, profit. Um, and and yes, $10, yep, abs $5, that's, yeah, I'm not telling the story. Now, Sports K, there's been talk about Sports K, and I, I know there's been discussion of whether or not Sports K jerseys might shut down. He doesn't know. 
Um, I, I did exchange emails with him and, and he's not sure what next year is going to bring. Nobody knows how Fanatics is going to be to deal with, right? Adidas has been kind of a pain over the last 12 months. So there's, there's definitely some trepidation for online sellers because they don't know how next year is going to be. Uh, Ben H sports, uh, Ben, I, I don't think he's going to be carrying as much stuff next season when Fanatics takes over, uh, again, some some discussion of how is this going to work he doesn't know how it's going to work either uh we shall see but i've dealt with ben for years uh it would be sad if he wasn't selling jerseys anymore but he's he's worked a long long time and so if if he decides he's going to retire from it i, I think he's 100 percent earned it um really really nice guy ben's a nice guy and and his email address is always in the description he's an ebay seller so you can go over to ebay look at his listings and then email him and sometimes he may have something that may not be listed. And a lot of the times it'll say he has one of an item. He may have more than that. So you can email him and go, hey, I was thinking about getting a jersey for myself and my brother. Or I was going to get a jersey for my dad and myself. We're gonna... so, so that kind of thing. And uh, he's, he's pretty good about getting back to people pretty quickly as well. Uh, and then there's the Facebook Marketplace, which can be difficult. Make sure that you're dealing with people who you know who they are or other people have dealt with them. Uh, way too many scams out there right now. And with jerseys, those are definitely a thing as well. So Facebook Marketplace. But I will say this, the companies that advertise with Facebook as jersey sellers, oh, fake, 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 fake. Just so ridiculous. Like $29.99, it'll always say, oh, big blowout sale. Everything's on sale. Everything must go. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but, and, and again, they market themselves as real. They'll use the same pictures the NHL shop uses. And this is why it just, it feels kind of skeezy a little, a little bit, uh, because you're, you're dealing with people who their, their very business model is kind of built on deception. I'm not talking about DH gate, DH gate. And some of these others, they, they do not lie about what they're selling you. They're not going to tell you this is hundred percent NHL authentic. Just you want a Jersey. Here's a Jersey, 50 bucks. And so you give them your 50 bucks and and everybody talks about, oh, I don't care if I get my hot dog mustard all over it. How messy are eaters at hockey games? I never spilled anything on myself at a hockey game. I wear jerseys. I, I don't know how messy people are at hockey games. Uh, but yeah, and I'm, I'm sure there's other online ways to find things too. But um, again, eBay, if you're looking for the classic jerseys, all you have to do is just go to eBay, just type in vintage NHL jersey and there's thousands of listings. And sometimes you might find a great deal. I have found some fantastic deals, some jerseys on there, even over the last 12 months that I couldn't hit the buy now button fast enough because I was like, that's that's a fantastic deal on a jersey I don't have that I might get for 40 or 50 bucks. Um, and then I, I usually get the benefit too of getting a message from somebody, hey, how's it going? I love your channel and uh, I can't wait for my jersey to, to be part of your collection. I'm glad it's going to a good home. Like there are pets. Um, which I, I do appreciate, and, and yes, those jerseys always end up in, in this area behind me, but some don't, and so now I'm going to pause, I'm going to take this board out, and we're going to discuss. All right, so I talked about deception, we'll get into that. This this is a Reebok Authentic, this is Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, this one I got from, I think it was through Full Moon, Full Moon Jerseys on eBay, which is a user that I've, uh, a seller I've gone through many, many times. They don't have anything that I, I need though, so I haven't used them in a long time. That's why I forgot to put them on the board. But Full Moon Jerseys, still, if you're looking for cheap collection items for your your, your, your jersey rack, they're great for that. Uh, you're going to get guys who've been traded years ago, but you're going to get a jersey for 50 bucks. You're going to get it for about the same price you're going to get those the, the, the knockoffs for. Now, uh, you'll notice that this is here. This is the knockoff version. So this is this is the real version. This is the knockoff, and uh, you can see the color difference right there. It is it is very 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 apparent um, that this one's not. And then the NHL logo is just a mess. The NHL logo. There's no attachment between the uh, the uh, the logo there, but here it's just you can see it's uh, it, the quality's not there. Now uh, this one here. I got this one off eBay for, and there's t there's still tags on it. Yeah, this this was a mistake. This was a mistake on my part. I, I made that mistake. I want to say five, at least five years ago. It might be six. I we might have even been. I think we were in the townhouse, which was six years ago. Uh, this was a mistake on my part because I didn't do due diligence. It was an eBay seller that was relatively new, didn't have feedback, 
and uh, this jersey was on there for I think it was sixty bucks. And when I got this, and it was quite clear it was a fake, um, that people watching the video were like, "Yeah, that's a fake." It was really, really obvious. Like this, this, this right here is it's and and if the camera is not doing justice to how atrocious it is, it is very obvious it's a fake. Uh, but what people told me right away, they were like, "Oh, you got to report the seller." Yeah, the seller disappeared. Seller disappeared. Uh, within a couple of months, that seller was gone. So they sell what they have in terms of fake merchandise, and then they just delete the user and they move on and probably create another. I also had one that sent me a, a fake jersey, and I could tell it was a fake right away. I messaged them. Again, I think they know who I who who I am. So they immediately refunded, told me, "Oh, we're sorry. We we had no idea. They didn't take the listing down." So it left me in an awkward position where I was like, do I do I publicly on a channel with a quarter of a million subscribers call them out? I didn't. I felt like that would be, I, I don't know their story. I don't know who they are. I just, I know I'm never dealing with them again. So I, I basically put them on a list of don't buy from. And uh, it, it's too bad because like the, the, the fake that I got from them, was I think a step up from some of the fakes I've seen in arenas. And if they just owned up to the fact that, yeah, we don't sell the real the real item, we're selling fakes, I think they'd, they'd probably have a better, uh, it, it, it just, it, I, I wouldn't have bought from them, but other people would. The problem is then they have to drop the price down. See, like people always say, well, you know, I, I get my fakes and I get it for 50 bucks. Yeah, but there's guys out there selling fakes for $200. Again, you do a search for NHL jerseys on eBay, you will see fakes on there for $200. And it may be people who do know that they're fakes, maybe people that don't, have no idea that they're selling a fake. Now, I've talked about kitted jerseys, so I'm gonna get into kitted jerseys. Um, custom throwback jerseys, they weren't on the board, and, and the reason they weren't on the board is because what they sell is a kitted jersey. What a kitted jersey is, it means that you get a blank jersey, so you can order blanks. You look online for blank jerseys and you can get them for 30 bucks. You can get a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey that doesn't have a logo on it for like 30 bucks. You can get a jersey of any team you want, 30, maybe 40 bucks, right? And then what they do is they then order the kit for the, for the logo. Uh, they get the name and number and then they manufacture the jersey and send it out. Technically, is it a fake? Yeah, probably. The problem that I have is I have some Reeboks from custom throwback jerseys that I know are real. I've checked them against other Reebok jerseys, but the CCMs I have, it's like 50-50. Some of them have been real and some of them, this, this one for instance is kitted. And then Adidas came out with the throwback. So when Adidas came out with the Team Classic, and I realized, you know, I had realized before that this was a kitted jersey, so I had taken this one out of the collection. The kitted jerseys don't go in the collection, they don't go in countdowns either, because it's in that no man's land, right? But the difference, you would go, well, that's that's about the same. The problem is this. Uh, this jersey here, the the team, team throwback at Adidas, you could find this for $129. This one, this kitted jersey, $229. So again, kitted jerseys, they will sometimes sell for a little bit more than what you might think. And for people buying it, they might say, well, it's, it's the real article, it's the real thing. It's, it's not far off, like the colors are right. Like you look at it, the colors are not, are not like drastically different. And to find differences between the two, it's not easy, but they're there. They're definitely there. Um, the single stitching that they use for the the name and number and everything, it's it, yeah, it, it really shows it's it's definitely not of the same quality as if you get one through the team. But where it's going to get interesting is when Fanatics takes over, are they going to do more throwbacks? Because fans want those old looks, and if they're not able to get them for a reasonable price online, they'll find them, and that's where the online knockoffs uh, make their money. Now, what I'd like to see come back is the fashion jersey. I would love to see fashion jerseys come back. This is a black ice jersey. This Maple Leafs black ice jersey, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think it's fantastic. And all black ice was is just black the whole thing out. There's a blue outline here. There's blue on the neckline, and that's it. And this is like just a, a really dark charcoal gray. I, I think it's great. 
Uh, so that was the Black Ice. And then the year after, Reebok decided to do another version, which was the Black Accelerator, which was not, I didn't like the Black Accelerators as much. But again, I found this one on eBay for like, I think this was 60 bucks when I bought it. The price has gone up a bit since then because of scarcity. So nobody wanted these. These were out there and nobody wanted to buy one. And then later on, there's the scarcity. Now, what I'd like to see done, and, and Yvonne and I were talking about this the other day too. So this is one of those San Jose giveaway jerseys that they have in their seats. And if if anybody's wondering, like, who would want these? Me. Absolutely me. Uh, the Tiburones jerseys are fantastic. Uh, Lost Tiburones, I think it's a good rebrand name for the Sharks. I think that could, but anyways, I, I digress. But these jerseys are so unique and different. Now, obviously, it's not the same quality. They're like, you know, worth maybe $25. I do buy them on eBay as well. I can find them for like $20, $25. I have, I think, four different Tiburones jerseys. I think they're fantastic. They're different. What I'd like to see... So we've talked about the specialty jerseys, right? For specialty nights. The the NHL absolutely could have it where you have. So I talked about the kits. Do the kits in-house. Uh, have NHL teams have the, the blank version of a jersey. And then you can get that logo made. You can even make that in-house. The the Canucks now are making their own sweatshirts in-house. And so you could, you could put a logo on the front of a jersey for that specialty night. And have people walk out with it. And you could charge them like... 75 bucks and still make a profit because you're just you're putting a logo on the front of a, a blank jersey which costs you maybe 25 dollars right so it's just a thought it's an idea but i'd i'd like to see these specialty jerseys maybe actually worn in a game too just once you know just a one-time thing and then people who go to the game have the option of buying that jersey and you can buy it online that kind of thing why not uh if the nhl wants to look at ways to to increase revenue it, it, that's a way to do it now starter is where the 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 whole idea of fashion jerseys really kicks off and sometimes it didn't work like the blue version of a of a philadelphia jersey doesn't really work but the exact same blue with the colorado jersey does and i have seen this same color blue for a red wings jersey i don't have that red wings jersey i've i've thought about ordering it but it's usually really expensive i have also seen and it is so pricey. Um, a red version of the Goathead Buffalo that was a starter fashion jersey, as well as a red Statue of Liberty Rangers jersey, which is one of the most beautiful jerseys I've ever seen. Um, I put in an offer for one. The guy rejected it right away, and I was like, all right, forget it. And so that one sold. I, I said, forget it, because the price he wanted was, was out of my price range. But, man, absolutely gorgeous, and I'd love to see them do that again. And, and just have a, a, a different version of a jersey that maybe the players don't wear it, but as fans, you can wear it. And again, uh, the abs, this jersey is one of my all-time favorites. I think that jersey is absolutely gorgeous. And you don't have to make it a third. Just, just manufacture them. Just find a fun color. All right. Now, um, I get questions about Royal Retros. Royal Retros is the renaming of 503 jerseys. Now, I've bought from 503 before. I have a Cleveland Barons from 503. I also have a Cleveland Barons from custom throwback jerseys, which is a kitted jersey. That's the reason my Cleveland Barons jersey was not in the countdown last summer. But this jersey I just got yesterday. Um, I ordered it through uh, Royal Retros. The quality's not bad. It's clearly a kitted jersey. The Nordiques never actually used this logo and this jersey. That's a Husky, not a Wolf. And I, I really... It would have been great if the Nordiques had done this. They were planning on the rebrand, uh, and then they moved to Colorado instead. So if they had stayed in Quebec City, this is what you would have got. This is what it would have. This is what it would look like. I, I think it's really nice. Um, I, I honestly, uh, I don't mind it. The quality's not bad. The price was uh, one twenty nine. So again, it's a kit. It's a kit. Uh, it's a jersey that, if you go through uh, Royal Retros, they generally sell the ones for defunct teams, and they sell ones, too, that teams never actually wore. So I, I don't think there's necessarily big trademark thing there. I would imagine they do their best to avoid any kind of trademark concerns. But I reserve the right to wear this in a video occasionally. But is it a kitted jersey? Yes. Would it be considered a fake by some? Yeah, probably. So what you're getting from them is not the the 
genuine on ice product because the Nordiques never wore this. But like they have some really nice, like they have a cream colored Colorado Rockies. I was like, man, if that looks good. So I just I wanted to see the quality of the logos, and honestly, the logo's not bad. Um, it's it's got some some edges here, and there's there's a couple of little areas that I could get my wife to clean up a little bit to make it look sharper, but it's not bad. I could see myself wearing that for a game of street hockey. I, I could, uh, depending on how well that logo is going to hold up to that kind of thing. Uh, I don't want it to get all bubbly. And then I wanted to end on this note. So talking about the fanatics and everything. Now this is geeky jerseys. So this is a geeky jersey, obviously not hockey hockey, but the geeky jerseys, these are hockey jerseys that they repurpose with, um, or that they, they, they basically have a print they use from TV shows. This being from Doctor Who, of course. And the 12th Doctor is my doctor because, of course, he is. Peter Capaldi all the way. And it just says the doctor. But this this is this is all uh, screen printed. Like, this is all sub sublimated is the word I was looking for. So there's no actual logo that's, that's separate from the jersey. It's sublimated in there. I have wondered if at some point in time we're going to get an NHL jersey that works in this fashion. And, and I'll, I'll explain why. Let me just go ahead and pause for a sec. So this is my first PWHL jersey. And uh, even the accent on, on the A. So this is my first, uh, or on the E, sorry. Uh, but this is my first PWHL jersey, sublimated. It's all sublimated. So uh, I do wonder if this is going to be the future with some of the NHL products as well. Uh, Montreal's the only one that I ordered because I go through the Montreal Canadiens team store. And I thought for... For the fact that I'm I'm going to be covering the PWHL, and this I wouldn't buy this if I wasn't going to. That'd be a pointless purchase. Um, but yeah, I I thought okay, I'll get Montreal. Maybe that'll be the team I'm rooting for. Who knows? Uh, because it's hard to find some of the others, and of course they're they're going to end up with logos next year. But yeah, it's all it's all sublimated. There's no there's no, and I I do wonder next year. When they have proper logos, will that be done the same way? Because I have a lot of jerseys that are for Junior League, uh, my Chilliwack Chiefs jerseys, sublimated. Uh, so that may be where it's headed. Do NHL jerseys head that direction as well? And if so, is that going to be at like the level that we have the Fanatics right now? Will that be a level below the replicas? And then the replicas next step up will be on ice? We'll see. But it's, to me, it's a fascinating discussion. I have no idea how this video is going to perform, obviously. Uh, but I, I did want to discuss this today because it does feel like this summer, everybody's going to have their eyeballs peeled for the big reveal from Fanatics. Each, each time that we've seen a change in who makes jerseys, there's a change in how the jerseys look. Now, Fanatics have said they're going to keep it the same as Adidas, but I do wonder if they're going to make little small changes uh, obviously, the Fanatics logo will go where the Adidas logo is on the jerseys, but could they bring in other changes as well? They could. Do they delay those changes for a year or two? Maybe. Uh, but it will be interesting to see uh, how that all works out because now the price we pay for a sublimated product is over twice what I was paying for the product back in 1990. The thing being, of course, that that tracks with inflation. So... Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you for accompanying me down this journey of jerseys. And I, I do look forward to seeing what's going to happen this summer. But yes, that's part of the reason why I've made sure that I, I have the collection I do. And if Fanatics, if those jerseys are awful, well, I've got the collection I have. And there you go. Um, I had to let go, like for instance, this year, uh, the stadium jersey from the Devils. I didn't get it. I'm not going to get it. Uh, the Rangers one I found through Sports K, and I got Fanatics versions of the Islanders and the Flyers versions on clearance from the NHL Canadian shop for like 50 bucks each. So uh, there there are still ways to get jerseys for, for relatively cheap. It's just a matter of keeping your eyes peeled. And for me, it was I'm, I'm not spending over $1,000 to get four stadium jerseys. I, I can't. I priced it out and I was like, I, I can't, I can't do that. That's just, that's, that's insane. That's complete insanity. Uh, rightfully, I'd be committed. But anyways, there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you again soon.